Hello grade 12 learners, today we're taking a look at the section called Vertical Projectile Motion. Now this is a very important introductory video. This video will mostly be theory based, but I say very important things in this video that you absolutely need to know in order to perform the calculations. So you need to watch this video, you need to know the basics, you need to know little tips and teacher tricks that I'm going to give you. So make sure you watch the entire video because I'll show you the types of questions they can ask in an exam or in a test as well. So let's jump right in. Vertical projectile motion is question three, usually in your physics paper, so paper one. And this is an example of how a vertical projectile motion question looks and the types of questions that you can expect to get in this question. Once again, I mean, this is standard across all physics questions. You will get asked a definition most likely. So here they ask a definition. Then we got some calculation questions, three, four mark questions, can be up to five, six marks questions for more difficult questions. And then either drawing a graph, like in this question, or interpreting a graph. And just before we get into this, I want you to know that vertical projectile motion isn't really a completely new section. Vertical projectile motion actually builds on a section that you learned already in grade 10 and that you were tested on again in grade 11, and it's called equations of motion and graphs of motion. So before you tackle this section, if you want to go back and go over your equations of motion for grade 10, that will be helpful for this section. But this is a snippet from your exam guidelines for vertical projectile motion. I linked the exam guidelines in the description box, and it says exactly what you need to know for this section. It tells you exactly the types of questions that you need to be able to answer. So use it as a checklist as you're going along. Okay, now, vertical projectile motion. What is this topic about? Well, the name kind of says it all. So vertical means that we're looking at motion up and down. So vertical means along the y-axis or up, down. Projectile, this is a word that you may not have heard before, but a projectile, this is the official definition. An object which has been given an initial velocity. So, for example, I throw it up. So, like if I take this pen, for example, and I throw it up, I've given it an initial velocity, it becomes a projectile. And then it moves under the influence of gravitational force only. So, there's the full definition so you can see it. So, we're dealing with basically something that is moving up or down. As soon as I give it an initial velocity, it's only moving under the influence of gravity. And that point is so important. Only the force of gravity is acting on this object. And obviously, we're dealing with motion, which means we're going to be using equations of motion and graphs of motion. Now, in grade 10, as I mentioned, you use these things, the equations of motion for horizontal motion or X motion left or right. You, your teacher may have shown you some vertical projectile motion questions. I know I show my grade 10s a few, but mostly you deal with horizontal motion. Now in grade 12, you will be dealing with vertical motion. So this is a exact screenshot or snippet from the final exam, um, your formula sheet. So you can see here that we do, we still have the horizontal equations. So that's a horizontal equation. This is a horizontal equation. This is a horizontal equation. And the way that you can tell that it's a horizontal equation is because of this, delta x, delta x, delta x. In other words, movement in the x direction. You get an alternative version of each formula. So it's not a different formula. It's the same formula, but instead of delta x, we've got delta y. You see, these two formulas are the same. This one you use for horizontal motion. This one is the same formula, but you use it for vertical motion. And each version of the formula has two alternatives because one is for um, horizontal motion, one is for vertical motion. So here's a side-by-side -side contrast again of those formulas. This one is for horizontal motion, and we know that because of the delta x. This one is for vertical motion. We know that because of the delta y. And it's obviously easy to remember, x is the x-axis horizontal motion, y is the y-axis vertical motion. Now, of course, you need to understand what each of the variables mean and when to use it. So we've got displacement. Now, obviously, in the context of vertical projectile motion, it's going to be delta y, as I've mentioned. Delta y is displacement, or basically, you can also think of it as the distance that you move. 
So for example, I can throw an object upwards like this, it can reach a maximum height and it can travel downwards, and I can ask you the height of the throw or the distance that it took or the distance that it traveled to reach maximum height. That would be delta y. So it is measured in meters, it's a vector, so it needs a direction. If they ask you for distance, you don't need to give a direction. Okay, velocity, meters per second, vector. That's basically the same thing as speed, but it's the vector version. Acceleration, meters per second squared, vector, and time in seconds, and it's a scalar. Now, I did mention over here, make sure you know the units for each of these physical quantities. It is really sad for me as a teacher, and it happens every single year when a question, for example, asks you to calculate the final velocity or the final speed. And the learner will give you the answer for final velocity. They'll say three, and either they forget the unit or they give the incorrect unit. So, for example, they'll give this as a unit. I have to give them that mark incorrect because that's not the correct unit for velocity. It would be meters per second. And actually, if we're asking you for velocity, you have to give me a direction. So, you have to give me the correct unit. You have to give me the direction if we're working with a vector. And I did write here. It's important to note that if they ask you for magnitude, you don't need to give a direction. So if they say the magnitude of the velocity, you don't need to give a direction. And if they ask for speed instead of velocity, then you don't need to give a direction because speed is a scalar. Okay, but back to the actual topic, vertical projectile motion and what these different words mean. The, uh, there are two definitions that you need to know in this section and you can find them in, in your exam guidelines. The one is projectile. The one is projectile, the second one is freefall. So let's take a look at the projectile definition. An object which has been given an initial velocity and then moves under the influence of the gravi gravitational force only. I know it seems silly, but if you leave out the word only, we can mark you down because it is true that it's only the gravitational force, no other forces. And grade 12s, what this means is that when this object is moving, so whether it's moving up or whether it's coming back down or whether I've dropped it or whether it's bouncing, the only force acting on it is the force of gravity pulling it downwards. And this can confuse some students because they often get confused with if the object is being thrown up, okay, the pen is going up, but gravity is pulling it down. So even while the object is going up, gravity is pulling it down. It's so important to remember this. And there's my definition for free fall. So it's the motion during which the only force acting on the object is the gravitational force. And we ignore air resistance and friction in these questions. We have to or it won't work. Now, remember, we said the only force acting on the object is the force of gravity. So remember, Fg can also be written as W. It's the same thing. You work that out by saying mass times gravitational acceleration. Now, this is the important part in this section. Gravitational acceleration is represented by the symbol g. So, in your equations of motion, you can see that we mention the symbol a. Now, a is acceleration, but for this section, for the vertical projectile motion section, a will always have the same value. Okay? A, acceleration, is acceleration due to gravity. Okay, so basically what I'm telling you is that for this section, for vertical projectile motion, A is basically equal to G, which is equal to 9.8 meters per second squared downwards. And when we are on Earth, which I mean, in our questions, we assume that we are on Earth, unless they say otherwise, we assume we're, we're on Earth, then we use A as being 9.8 meters per second squared, and it'll always be downwards. So when we substitute a value in for A, what I'm trying to tell you, and I'm repeating it because it's important, you will substitute in 9.8, always, and the direction is downwards, always. And that is what I say here. The approximate value for G is 9.8 meters per second squared downwards. And it's the same for all objects, regardless of their mass. So whether I'm talking about a tiny object or a big object, it's 9.8 meters per second downwards. And another important thing to remember is that it's 9.8 meters per second downwards at all stages of the motion. So this is, again, where a lot of students go wrong. If I throw a ball upwards or a pen upwards, okay, it's going to be thrown upwards. It's going to reach a maximum height. Okay, imagine I'm not holding the pen. So I've, I've thrown it upwards. 
it reaches a maximum height and it comes down back to its starting position at all stages of this motion. So when it's just left my hand, when I've thrown it, while it's traveling up, while it's at its maximum height and while it's coming down at all stages of the motion, acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared downwards. Even when this thing is at its maximum height. I don't know if all of you know this, but I do teach this to my grade 10s um, that when an object is thrown upwards and it reaches its maximum height, it actually stops for a second in the air. Not literally a second, but it stops for a moment in time in the air and its velocity is actually zero. But even here where its velocity is zero, A, acceleration due to gravity is still 9.8 meters per second downwards, always. So let's take a look at the scenario that I have over here on the left side of the screen. And we're going to pretend that I'm throwing a ball up in the air. Okay, so basically what happens in this scenario is the following. Let's say I throw the ball upwards here. And let's say that the initial velocity is 10 meters per second upwards. Okay, this green arrow represents velocity. Velocity is going upwards. Then as the ball travels upwards, now I want you to think with logic. As the ball or the pen or something, whatever, travels upwards, does it go faster the higher it gets or does it get slower? It actually gets slower. So you throw it up very quickly, so it travels very fast, and then it slows down until at its maximum height it has a velocity of zero. So I hope you can see on the diagram that that is why the arrows get smaller and smaller the higher you go. So you've got a big green arrow, then it goes smaller, then it goes smaller, and then smaller and smaller until the velocity up here is zero. So for example, this could be eight meters per second upwards. This could be six meters per second upwards, eventually till it gets to zero. What happens as it comes back down? As it comes back down, it starts to travel faster and faster, but it's going in the opposite direction. So this would be 10 meters per second upwards. This would be eight meters per second upwards, upwards, and so on. Here, we would go in the opposite direction. So it would be six meters per second downwards. Technically, when we substitute it into formulas for calculations, we should make it a negative, okay? Because if up is positive, down is negative. And this is something I'm going to be speaking about a lot, the fact that direction is so important in these things. So if I take up as positive, all of these green uh, velocity values are positive. As soon as it comes down, they must all be negative. So six meters per second downwards, eight meters per second downwards. Remember, if I were to substitute it into an equation, it would be negative eight and so on until it reaches the same position where it started. It's a negative 10 meters per second or 10 meters per second downwards. Remember, you will only substitute in the negative when you're actually putting it in a formula. So 10 meters per second downwards. You can see that the velocity changes, but what I want to show you here are these blue arrows. Do you see that at all points in the motion, at every single position, whether the object is going up, whether the object is going down, or whether the object is at its maximum height, these arrows are pointing downwards. And these arrows represent acceleration due to gravity. So A, which is G, which is 9.8 meters per second squared downwards. It's always that value, and it's always down. So in this case, if I chose down as positive, as negative, sorry, up as positive, down as negative, if I had to substitute A into an equation, I would actually substitute it in as a negative. We will get more into this positive and negative stuff when we do um, examples and when we do calculations, but just keep in mind from the beginning that direction is very, very important. And for now, also keep in mind that velocity at the maximum height the turning point is zero meters per second. Other things that you need to be aware of when doing vertical projectile motion questions is something that we call time symmetry. I hope you know what the word symmetry means. But in this context, it's basically saying that the time it takes for a projectile to reach its maximum height is equal to the time that it takes the projectile to fall back down to the height that it was thrown. So what that means is if I release a ball from the ground, so let's say zero meters, and let's say here is its maximum height. Remember, at the maximum height, velocity is zero. Let's say it took two seconds to do that journey or to make that journey from the ground where it was thrown to its maximum height. What that means is that it'll take the exact same time to go from the maximum height back down 
to the level at which it was thrown, two seconds. That's why it's called time symmetry, because two seconds, two seconds. Hope that makes sense. Then this is something that I have mentioned already, but the magnitude, which means the size or the amount of the velocity, at the same point upwards and downwards will be the same. So what that means is if I release a ball over here with 10 meters per second, remember it's going up, but I don't care about direction, 10 meters per second up, then at the same point, but in the opposite direction, it'll be 10 meters per second down. Hope that makes sense. If I had to have a ball, so it's going up, 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 just before it reaches its maximum height. So say at this point over here, this height's above the ground. Let's say it's at four meters per second up. At that same level, but coming down, it'll be four meters per second again. And we do make use of this in calculations. So for example, if you have an object that is thrown or projected from a building, and let's say that you projected with an initial velocity of 20 meters per second upwards, then remember, as it travels upwards, velocity decreases, it slows down. At its maximum height, velocity is zero. Then as it travels back down, velocity increases again. So let's say it could be like two meters per second downwards, five meters per second downwards, 10 meters per second downwards. But as soon as it reaches the same horizontal kind of height above the ground or above its starting position, it'll have the same velocity. So over here, it was released with 20 meters per second upwards. Over here, the velocity will be 20 meters per second downwards. Okay, so the magnitude is the same. In videos to come, we will look at some steps and some things you need to know to do calculations, which I obviously will go through. And you need to know the graphical representation of vertical projectile motion, three different types of graphs that you need to know. But here's a basic quick summary of everything we learned today. I hope that this has been helpful. Please subscribe if you haven't yet and comment down below what you'd like to see next.